Hello, and welcome to Master Life Book Two, The Disciples' Personality, Week Two, Renew Your Mind. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, I pray that whoever this listening is, listener is who's listening to this right now, Lord, that you help them to understand your word and what it means, Lord, to renew your mind, what it means, Lord, to focus totally on you, Lord, and to um, get rid of those personality traits, God, that keep us from knowing you and your mind in order that we may do your works. Lord, I pray that they have an understanding today and clarity of everything that's spoken, and they're able to activate it in their life. In your son, Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. So let's start with our memory verse, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's a great start for our discussion today. The, the writer of, of this scripture is talking about how we must renew our mind by allowing ourselves to offer our bodies up. It starts with saying, I urge you in view of God's mercy because God is indeed merciful. Even when we were dead in our sins, God still loved us. He still helped us. He still protected us from all of the harmful things in the world. And if you're sitting here today, I'm sure you have a testimony or story of how God has been graceful to you and merciful to you. So because of that, it says we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice means that we are alive and well in the earth and able to sacrifice our needs, our wants, and our desires to make sure that we're doing God's will. Jesus Christ already made a sacrifice with his life, and we don't have to die because of our sins. So God is saying, because you are alive in Christ and I've given you that second chance and that mercy and that grace, I want you to live as a sacrifice unto me, holy and pleasing. This is our true and proper worship. And in order to do that, we cannot conform to the pattern of this world. Remember, this world does have a pattern. It does have a culture. There are certain things that happen to you on a daily basis that are not shocking to anyone because they say, well, that's just what's expected. When you're dealing with a young teenager and they're trying to hold on and be celibate and say that they're not going down that road, they're going to stay a virgin until they're married. And then all of a sudden they, they end up losing their virginity and, and life goes wrong. A person's not shocked by that. They said, well, that's what happens. Everybody does it. There is a pattern to this world, but you, when you're in Christ, have to say, I won't conform to that. I'm going to do the things that God wants me to do, the things that please him, the things that are holy, that may seem strange to others. I'm going to forgive people when they wrong me, when they say something to offend me. I'm going to be the first to say, hey, I'm sorry that we're arguing. I'm sorry that we're in this place in our relationship. Please forgive me, and I also forgive you. That is strange to people. That does not go along with the pattern of this world. The pattern of this world says when somebody offends you and they wrong you, don't talk to them anymore. Leave them alone. Flush them out of your life. And that's just not the mind of Christ. So once we get transformed by the renewing of our mind, then God is able. He's able to test and approve us and, and show us what his will is for our life. Once we get all of that extra garbage out of our mind about how the world operates, we are able to do his will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So let's talk about how do we renew our mind? Because we have been stuck in a culture for so long. There's a lot in here that we really have to test against what is God's way. So let's talk about the natural man. Even though you want to do right, your mind thinks about doing wrong. The devil plays tapes of wrong actions over and over in our mind to keep us making wrong decisions. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 states, the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they're discerned only through the spirit. This is what I mean by when you do things, when you're kind to people that aren't kind to you, when you love people that hate you, that's foolishness to someone that doesn't have the spirit of God. 
is foolishness. They cannot understand it. And a lot of times you find yourself trying to explain to them that, hey, it's just the right thing for me to do. It's just the right thing for me to do. This is what God is telling me. And a lot of people cannot understand that. Let's talk about this natural mind. The natural mind refers to the thinking process that's limited to human resources and human reason. The natural mind becomes progressively self-destructive if left to its own desires. Our natural mind in its own state only deals with those senses, those five senses that we talked about last week. Your mind, your human nature, is only going to respond from what it hears, smells, sees, touches, and tastes. It does not really care about whether it's right or wrong. It's, it's really doing these things based upon does it feel good to the body, not to the heart, not to the soul, but to the body. Romans 1, 28 through 31 says, furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanders, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. This describes the person in their natural mind. And as I'm reading that, you may say, yeah, there are some people that fall into that category. These are the people that are separated from God. These are people that have rejected God. When a person rejects God, they're saying, you know, I don't believe in that. I don't want to follow God. When they have made up their mind to do that, God gives them a way to that mind. A lot of times you may say, why is this person so evil? Why would a person do that? It doesn't make sense that they would do that to other people. It wouldn't make sense that a person would say these things and make other people feel this way. They cannot help it. They have been given away to their natural mind. And in their natural mind, they are self-destructive. Nothing good and honest and pure can come out of a person that is separated from God. And it's important to understand that when it comes to the concept of forgiving people. They are literally not in their right mind. A simple person separated from God cannot even fathom that what they're doing is so wrong and hateful. Yeah, they may know that it's mean. They may know, you know, that's not the right thing to do, but nothing within them, no consciousness of their mind is going to tell them to stop and not do those things. So that is why we must pray for people that we see that are separated from God. Our lost sisters and brothers, our lost friends, our lost family, family members, those who are not connected to God, when they do things to offend you, you have to understand that person does not carry God's spirit. A body that's ruled by the flesh. Um, before we knew Christ, we were dead in our transgressions and our sins as well. And that's also important in forgiveness, that there were some things that we did that, aff that offended people, that people didn't like that we did just for our own self gratification and it hurt other people. So we must understand that, that we cannot hold judgment over anyone else because before we knew Christ, that's how we operated. But once we repented and accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, God made us alive in Christ, which means that his spirit now became activated and we can now have the mind of Christ. If a Christian lives like the unbelieving world though, this person is called a worldly Christian. You have a lot of Christians that say, I know God. I know who he is. I accept him as my Lord and Savior, but they still struggle with doing the right thing and living a life that's honorable to God. This worldly Christian is a person governed by human nature more than the spirit of God. Their body is still in control. Their flesh is still telling them what to do, but it's different now because they really do know that it's wrong. And there's a pull inside of them consistently telling them, don't do that. That's wrong. So how do we get to the point that we're fighting this flesh and we're winning and we're doing God's way? We need to adopt the mind of Christ. In order to adopt the mind of Christ, we have to think as Christ does. When you receive Christ, Christ secures your salvation, but you are responsible 
for how you live. You are responsible for these choices on a daily basis. God will not make the choices for you. He will now tell you, because you have a spirit of Christ, hey, bad decision. This is a wiser way to go. This is a better way to treat people. He will now tell you. And a lot of people call it their conscience. They say, when I was going to do that, my conscience wasn't right. I didn't feel right about it. Well, you were feeling the spirit of God telling you not to do that. So now that you have this choice and you have this voice of God in your ear, and then you have your flesh working, you have to make a choice on which one you're going to follow. The Holy Spirit, which comes upon us when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, wants to be your mind, to your mind what a rudder is to a, sh a ship. The Holy Spirit wants to be that rudder. A rudder keeps the ship on course so that it arrives at its destination. When you are in a situation where you're made, to, where, you're, where you have to make a choice, the Holy Spirit wants to be that guide that says, hey, don't go that way. I want you to turn this way. Keep your eyes on God. Stay on the path that he has for your life. Stay within his will. The Holy Spirit is always going to be right there with you in every moment and every choice you have to make, telling you, hey, you know God would not be pleased with that. Or hey, there's a better opportunity for what God wants for you over here. Let's go this way. Colossians 3, 1 through 3 states, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. What Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you die and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. I'm telling you, when you adopt this mind of Christ, God is saying, now I need you to fill your temple with my spirit so that you can hear me. And then you follow everything that I'm saying. He wants us to adopt his mind. He wants us to set our hearts on godly things. See, when you're in your flesh, you want to feed your flesh everything of the world. I want to know every story. I want to watch every show. I want to be a part of every conversation. I want to go to every social event. That is your flesh speaking. God says all of that is foolishness to him. All of that doesn't even matter. He says there are some very important things that he values in the earth. He values about serving people, taking care of others, meeting their needs, taking care of the poor, the orphan children, the elderly, your family and your friends, loving them, asking them for forgiveness if you need to, reconciling uh, relationships. You need time to do that. You can't be distracted by always having your mind on the things of the world. You have to stay in tune with God to say, God, what are those things that you want me to focus on? In order to activate this mind, because you're saying, Tara, it sounds great. I would love to be focused on godly things all day. I really would want to know what he wants out of me on a daily basis and not to be distracted. But how do I get to that point? Because I'm fighting with my flesh on a daily basis. My flesh doesn't want to do any of that. My flesh likes to do the things that I'm used to doing, the things that I have fun with. So how do I make this switch that you're talking about where I'm in, where I'm more in tune with God and that, that becomes the priority of my thought and not all the other things. Well, we have to activate the mind. So let's talk about that. The first thing you need to do is remember that Christ was tempted in every way you are tempted, yet he overcame the temptation. There is nothing that we deal with, and I know that's a crazy concept to think that uh, Jesus dealt with pride and envy and lust and all these things trying to come at him. Yes, he did it. He came down here in human form, uh, uh, the son of God, in order to feel what we feel in the flesh. So just because he didn't act on those things doesn't mean that Satan did not try to bring those things to Christ. But he was able to overcome them to give us an example of when we have his spirit, we can too. We must pray for grace in our time of need. Anytime we are set into a situation where we have a choice, pray for God's grace that God help me. I, help me. I am in this situation and I need to make sure that I'm honoring you. Help me. We need to express humility by getting on our knees. A lot of people think that's not a very, uh, something that they have to do sometimes when they're praying to God. But when you pray to God and you get on your knees, you're saying, Father God, I accept your authority in my life. I am humble before you knowing that I cannot do any of this without you. You come to God in a very humble state saying that I am weak in this. I need your help, Father God. Please help me. We must adopt God's attitude and choose his response 
toward the temptation. See, the world has opinions on everything. The world, if you listen to the world, will tell you, oh, that's fine. It's okay. That's normal what you're doing. Everybody does that. I understand that you got mad and angry and did that. Everybody gets mad. That's fine. But in the way that they're saying it, they're not telling you to now go back and apologize or make your wrongs right to tell people, I'm sorry, I offended you. They, the world will tell you, oh, they'll be okay. They understand. No, they don't understand. They understand that you were wrong and you need to go back and make it right. So in order to do that, we must adopt God's attitude and choose his response. When you're in tempted situations, it's not about your opinion of whether it's right or wrong. It's not about the world's opinion. It's about what did God say about it? You tell God, God, I'm gonna do what you say about it. No matter what my mind is telling me, no matter what the culture is telling me, no matter what my friends and family is telling me, I know what your word says about it because I've read your word or I'm gonna seek what you say about it. So now I know this is what you say. So I'm gonna choose what you want for me in this situation. Then you must ask the Holy Spirit to impress you with the way to deal with the temptation. Say, Father God, this is a temptation I deal with on a daily basis. Ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, tell me what I need to do. What do I need to get out of my life? What do I need to remove? What am I doing to keep this, this temptation from, entering into my mind every day how am i allowing this to become a real a highlight reel that satan keeps going over and over and over again in my mind what am i feeding my flesh what am i feeding my flesh that keeps this happening in my life why this won't go away holy spirit help me to deal with it whether that means i need to get accountability partners whether i need to spend more time with god whether i need to stop talking to people that stir me in the wrong direction Holy Spirit, tell me what are the factors in my life to why this thing is still a temptation. Then we must look for a scripture to claim during the temptation. Once you know what God says about a thing, it's good to keep that scripture in mind, to memorize it, so that when a temptation comes up, you can quote that. You can say, no, that is not who I am. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ, and I will not do that thing. I will not boast. I will not brag. I will not lose my temper. I will not fall to lust. I will not gossip about others. I will not steal. I will not lie. These are things that God does not want for me, and you have to quote his word. Father God, I am submitted to your authority. I am your workmanship in the earth. You have to quote something to speak to that thing that is trying to tempt you. Then ask God to help you focus on his will. Say, Father God, this thing is trying to take my mind. It's trying to distract me. Help me to hear what your will is for me today. God, what would you like me to do today? What would you like me to spend my time on to advance your kingdom? And when God tells you what to do, he may tell you to call and pray for someone. He may tell you, hey, I need you to start this program somewhere. I need you to go serve in your church. I need you to go do something kind for a neighbor. Get up and go do that. See, there are heavenly distractions that we need. We need God to help us to focus on other things so that we will be distracted from the temptations that Satan tries to bring into our mind. This is why you don't want to have an idle mind. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. If he sees that you're not focused on anything, you're not busy doing the will of God for your life, you're not busy serving, he says, oh, I'll drop something in there for you to do. You got to be so focused on God and so busy on the things that he's telling you to do that there is no time for Satan to keep poking at you and trying to get you to do other things. Acknowledge and ask forgiveness for thinking about the temptation. This is an important step. Tell God it's there. I thought about it for a second. God, forgive me. You know that that is not something that I want to engage in. That is not something that is honorable to you. Father God, thank you for helping me. And I ask your forgiveness that that is even still there, that I created, unfortunately, some type of doorway maybe to put that into my life. But God, I saw the thought. It's there. Thank you for helping me through it. But I ask for forgiveness that, it, that I even entertained it. And then we need to obey God's command, knowing that you are in spiritual warfare. Don't ever think that you're not in a battle. We are in a battle daily. There are some battles that seem bigger than others, but every day with every choice, we are in a spiritual battle. And you must choose to do things Christ's way.
The mind of Christ came to you when you were saved. You already have the mind of Christ within you. God created you to be like Jesus. John 8, 31 and 32 states, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Living in the word of God is our primary source of knowledge about Christ. In order to know what Jesus would do, in order to know the mind of God, you have to get into his word. That's the only way you will know Christ's teaching. And when you follow those teachings, you are a disciple of Christ. It is impossible to do God's will and you don't know his word. You don't know his mind by getting into that word. You don't know his spirit. You don't know how he will respond to situations unless you read the word. When you read God's word and you see the life of Christ, you see him forgiving people. You see him loving people that hated him. You see him helping people, serving people not offending people too much to the point where they could not receive his message. Yes, there were those who hated him and no matter what he said, those Pharisees were against him. That's how it was set up for him to ultimately get to the cross. But most people, when he needed to correct them, he corrected them in love. Everything Christ did was out of love for us. It was out of love for whoever he was helping, healing or correcting. When he spoke to the woman at the well, he did not tell her all of her sins. He just said, I'm going to offer you living water. He said, you know your situation. I don't really need to tell you everything. You know how you live. He didn't make her feel ashamed. He said, I'm just offering you a better way. So in order to do that and to think Christ's thoughts, we must stay in the word of God. So when you're trying to renew your mind, I want you to know there are some key things you can do on a daily basis. These are some just quick tips that when you are struggling with sin, you're struggling with temptation, and you say, Tara, I, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling. I don't really, there, I, I get what you're saying, but you don't know my temptation, Tara. This thing is hard. It always comes up. It's always in my mind. I want to tell you, try some of these tips. Try singing songs of praise. Try memorizing scripture that you can speak out of your mouth on a daily basis especially when that temptation comes pray talk to god all day long say god help me i don't know why this is still god here god help me bring those thoughts captive say i will not no let me stop nope i will not think about that right now that is not godly that is not pleasing that is not pure set your mind on those things above demolish satan's strongholds you have to say that is not going to take me down. It is not going to be a chain on my life. Because remember what I said, the flesh is self-destructive. It does not care that the decisions that you're making are destroying your family, destroying your life, destroying your future. It does not care. It doesn't care that it's destroying your health with substance abuse. Your body could care less. It is there for the temporary pleasure. It does not care about the lifelong consequences. And you must know the body is very selfish. So you have to demolish those strongholds and say, I will not be chained to this thing that I know is not good for me. Commit to yourself, yourself to God as a living sacrifice. Say, God, because this is what you want out of me, that's why I'm going to do it. Because I'm committed to your authority. Talk to your friends. Other people need to hold you accountable. That's your very first step. When you see that you're really struggling with a temptation, tell a trusted friend. Say, look, I want to confess to you that I'm dealing with this, but I'm coming to you because I need your help. I need your prayers and I need your accountability. When you see me getting out of line and it seems like I'm going down that road again, I need you to come and to help me. Remind me of, that I want to serve God. Remind me of my commitment to do the right thing. And then help others in need. Spend your time serving others. Serve others and get that holiness distraction to where satan doesn't have time to get in your ear and claim the mind of christ claim his mind say i do have the mind of god i am the righteousness of god through jesus christ christ lives in me it's not i who live but he who lives in me you have to speak that you are christ like well I wanted to thank you for your time today and I hope you got something out of this word. I hope you are able to deal with the temptations and the distractions that are coming into your life. I pray that the Holy Spirit every day is not stronger than your flesh and helping you to overcome those temptations, helping you to overcome those traps by the enemy because every day he has a trap. 
he only has one job to kill, steal, and destroy. You have to know Satan is not your friend. He is never your friend. He wants to ruin your life, ruin your relationships, and kill you. He does not want salvation for you. He does not want you to live out the full will of God in your life. He does not want you to see what God has planned for you. He has ruined many people by getting them off a horrible path that they never really lived out the life God intended for them. Don't let that be your story. Be so adamant that I will see the glory God has for me on this side of heaven. I will help to advance his kingdom and I will use his gifts for, I will use my gifts that he's given me for his glory. I will get to a point where he can use me. I will be that living sacrifice. I will live a life holy and pleasing to God. Let us pray. Father God, I hope that whoever listened to this today, Lord, that they can receive you within their spirit, receive the calling you have on their life to lay down the flesh, lay down those things in the flesh, crucify the flesh, Lord, so they may live in the spirit for you. God, I thank you for them. I thank you that you're going to help them with their temptations. I think you're going to free them from all of these strongholds and things that try to chain them down and keep them bound and away from your will. I break it right now in the name of Jesus, that whatever is holding them back, holding them down will be broken as they call on you and they accept the mind of Christ. I thank you for the new study time they'll have in your word. I thank you, Lord, that they will pray and memorize scripture and call on you for help when they need it. Thank you, God, for the work you're doing in the life of this believer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.